This is my keyboard. It is a mechanical, split, ergonomic, non-QWERTY 30% keyboard. And today I'm going to explain to you why I made each of these changes. Mechanical keyboards. If you clicked on this video, you probably don't need me to explain to you why people use mechanical keyboards. They're pretty common nowadays, and the main reason is being able to customize the look and feel of your keyboard. What's different about this keyboard is it's a low profile mechanical keyboard uh, that uses 12 gram chalk switches. The reason why I chose low profile is mainly for portability. This keyboard is incredibly thin and can fit in a pencil case and be carried with you. As for 12 gram switches, they aren't anything particularly special. Lighter does not mean faster or more ergonomic, despite what people may say. Split. This one should be pretty basic. When you type, you need to put your hands closer than shoulder width to each other. This causes you to angle your wrist, which is called ulnar deviation, which can cause wrist problems or just be uncomfortable for long periods of time. Having your hands shoulder width apart is just more comfortable. Ergonomic slash column staggered. To touch type properly, each finger is assigned a column of keys on the keyboard. Now look at your hands. Uh, hopefully your fingers aren't all slanted. Having the keys not be row staggered just makes more sense for touch typing. In the same vein, your fingers aren't all the same length either. So having all the keys be column staggered just makes more sense as well. Just try and rest your fingers on the home row. You'll find it's not very comfortable, especially for your pinky, unless you rotate your wrists or do something weird. Non-QWERTY. Honestly, the difference between QWERTY and non-QWERTY layouts is pretty insane. The amount of movement you are forced to do to type with QWERTY is very noticeable compared to other layouts. QWERTY puts keys in random spots, whereas other layouts put the most used keys closer to your fingers. The layout I use is called Workman, but I would also recommend you to learn Colmac DH. Uh, either one is fine. 30%. This one is probably going to be the hardest to sell, but here we go. Small keyboards require less reaching. On a 30% or even 40%, the farthest you will ever need to reach is a single key away. The benefit of this is that your hands will always be in the same spot, which means you will never need to reposition your hands ever. For things like coding, this is really nice since all the symbols are easily reachable and I never have to move my hands to type equals or square brackets or whatever. So before I end the video, I'd like to address some common questions I've heard before. Uh, what about my muscle memory? This question is often asked about switching to non-QWERTY, non row staggered, and smaller keyboards, so I'll talk about each point individually. Non-QWERTY is probably the biggest change you can make. If you're interested about it, I have a video of my two-month progression of learning Workman, which you can read about in the description. The TLDR is that it won't mess up your QWERTY muscle memory once you learn it, and learning it should take around 30 to 40 hours of practice to get up to the same speed you were before. As for row stagger to column stagger, not a big deal. Maybe an hour or two at most to get used to. Now for the 30%, I would probably recommend starting out with a 40% layout, which includes modifier keys. Getting used to layers will probably take a week or two. To move from 40% to 30% isn't that hard once you're used to layers and thumb keys. If you're interested in my key map slash layout, I can talk about that in another video. Can I do X, Y, or Z? Or what can't I do on this keyboard? A lot of people use keyboards for a lot of different things. And uh, here's a non-exhaustive list of things that people have asked about that you can do without compromise. Uh, you can write stuff, you can code, data entry, browse the web. If you're a digital painter or a video editor, should be not a problem. The only thing that you may have to compromise is playing video games. For me personally, I'm, I mostly play games casually now, so I can get away with using a 30% keyboard and some creativity. If you're trying to be a competitive gamer, you probably still want to stick to a TKL or whatever. Uh, seems scary, where would I even start? I wouldn't recommend you to change everything after watching this video. All of these things I did incrementally, and I would probably suggest the same for you as well. Maybe I can make another video on how to get into ergo keyboards. The point of this video is more to give you a goal to aim for. If you think any of these changes that I made would benefit you as well, I would encourage you to do some research about it or even leave a comment below. So yeah, that's why I don't use a normal keyboard anymore. I'm always looking for ways to improve my typing experience. If you have any ideas, you can let me know in the comments. In the future, I'd like to take a look at Keywell style keyboards like the Dactyl Manuform and even maybe take a look at stenography or other chord based input systems.